Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this video is to take a short look at the Microsoft Word user interface. And this user interface will be based on Microsoft Windows, so there will be differences for folks that use Macs and other operating systems. But this should give you the gist of the kind of things you can do in the program, even though on other um, operating systems, especially Mac, you may have to look in different uh, ribbons, different menu items, and even in the Mac, uh, Mac OS user interface dropdowns to find some of the information related to what the Microsoft Word program needs for its options and printing and so on. So let's take a quick look. So right now I'm on a Microsoft Windows computer and on the um, the, the operating system is the desktop. There is usually something like a recycle bin or a trash can. Um, you could put icons on your desktop and you can have a taskbar of some kind with icons that are shortcuts to your favorite uh, programs. At the lower left hand corner there's a start area and in um, Microsoft uh, Windows it uses the Microsoft logo in Mac there's an, a Mac logo and in here you can go in and usually search to find your program because everyone has a different setup for what uh, actual programs and folders they have open in their pop-up start area menu here so I just use the search button we're going to look up Word and here it is so when Microsoft Word opens primarily on the Windows it'll open into something called the backstage area or the startup page. Um, and in this case, you can see that you have the opportunity to create a new blank document. You can have a tutorial to take a tour of Word. And if you haven't worked with Word before, I'd really recommend taking a few minutes to look through this just to see what Microsoft shares with you that can help you point you in the right direction for some things. There will also be some templates. And there's usually um, by default opened a recommended for you section, which may not be populated if you're new to using Word. But as you start doing work, the AI tools and algorithms that code Word will pick some of this up and recommend some things to you that may be helpful, either because of however many times you've opened them before, etc. You can collapse this. Then you will usually see, again, if you've been working on Word for a while and have saved a number of documents, you'll see recent documents. You'll, if you pin any documents, you can see those and um, documents that are shared with you from other people. Then you'll see the opportunity up here on the left hand bar to make a new file, to open an existing file, to look at account information, give feedback and to, to change your options. We'll look at a couple of those things later. Right now, let's start with a blank document. And before we go any further, let me share with you, if you don't already know this, these videos that I do are put on YouTube. And you do have the option in YouTube to slow down the speed of the video in case I'm speaking a little faster than you'd like. Or if I'm speaking all right, but you'd like to move through the, the graphics a little faster, you can actually speed up the video. So this is the Microsoft Word user interface. The user interfaces for the Microsoft programs on the PC for Windows all look very much the same. And actually for Mac, even though there are variations, they also have a tendency to look the same. They've made them thematically familiar. In this case, Word has its overall user interface area, including this top bar. It has what is known as your menu tabs that when you click on each one of them, they transfer to a different what is called now ribbon. Back in the day, it used to be more of a thin toolbar with either just icons that you would click and you get a drop down of phrases of different things you could do. And then sometimes there might be something that would say like you know, editing or something up there. But over time, last three or so versions, four versions, um, they've moved to having a lot more graphical user interface concept up here. So people could at a glance grab and look at icons and click on different things. In this uh, tab area, uh, or below this, sorry, let's just go through the levels first and then we'll look at more details. After this ribbon area, you have your workspace, which is where your document will be that you could do your work on. You can type, you can insert things like images and clip art, things like that. 
then you have something known as a status bar. So starting at the top here, this top bar area, it has um, some basic, what is called a quick bar area. I have personalized mine. Normally when you get into Word for the first time, you'll see a little disc icon, and then you'll usually see a couple of little curved arrows, one that means redo and one that means undo. I've removed those because I use keystrokes all the time, but you can also change your quick bar to add some of the favorite tools you use consistently so that if you close up your ribbon, which we'll do in a moment, so you know what I mean, you can still have some of your favorite functions up here. But sometimes people want to close the ribbon in order to get more um, real estate space to work on their screen. Up here, you'll also have a chance to see the document's name if it has a name. You'll be able to search for um, Microsoft-related help and assistance, see a little bit about your account information. And over here, you have a, a display options. If you click this, you can auto hide this thick ribbon. You could show the tabs only, and you could show the tabs and commands, which is the tabs and the ribbon. And that's what I have now. Oops. And then <laughs> you have the ability to minimize your window, which I had just done, to make the window a little smaller, make it bigger, and then to close the program altogether. In the ribbon, before we start looking at it, at the lower right hand side there's this little up arrow and it means you can collapse the ribbon and what i can see now is just the menu and i can easily click here and get to any of the things i need so if you're a person who really doesn't want to see all that because you feel cluttered and you've become proficient with uh, word and want to have some quick uh, start bar icons and things up here like i sometimes do this is fine but if you realize you want that ribbon back again you just come up here to this blue toolbar up near the top right. Look at ribbon display options and show table and commands. I'll keep this on for the rest of the video. In here, before we go through the ribbon, because there's so much, let's step back down to the status bar. Status bar will tell you how many pages are in the document and where you are, how many words you've typed. Um, I currently have text predictions off. I do little things to try to just save memory on my computer. There will be other things that will show up here if you set or change settings that affect your, your program. Um, up here, or excuse me, down here, you, we are in what is um, known as the normal mode. The read mode would be like if you were reading this on a Kindle. If you accidentally get into a mode like that, you should be able to press your escape key on your keyboard to get out of it. We are now in um, page layout, which means that if there were headers and footers on every page, You'd be able to see them. We don't have any. And then there's also a web layout, which also is full page, but what this would look like if you're putting this information on a web page. Microsoft went big into the idea of web paging everything a long time ago, but Word is not really the kind of program that you would translate to the web um, for various reasons. Then next to those three common views, there's a zoom bar so that you can make your document bigger, to make your text look bigger to you without actually changing the text size. And you can also click on the number and change the size here um, to page width or 75%, do this sort of thing. Now, these ribbons. There are a variety of tabs up here, most of which the average out-of-the-box Microsoft Word user will see. Some of them you won't. I put developer up here because I develop things and I use some of these tools, but normally you won't see it. Help is part of this. Acrobat may or may not be. I say that because Microsoft Word does allow you to save your documents as Word PDFs, which is a wonderful tool if you need it. However, I also, as a designer, have a... Uh, Adobe Creative Suite with the formal um, Adobe Acrobat program. And this plugin is, I think, so that I can do more things with that. So don't worry if you don't see developer or Acrobat. But there are add-ins that you could choose to add once you're a proficient uh, Word user. The common ones that are usually on here are Home, which is what I call the Kitchen Sink tab. You could do basic things with fonts and the uh, text size, text color, underline it, bold it. You can change the width of paragraphs, the width of lines between the paragraphs, add bullets and numbers. 
You could change the styles used in a document and even modify them. You can create and share PDFs. And there's a few other things on here you can do uh, that we'll look at later. The insert tab and ribbon has to do with things that you can insert into your document. Pictures, clip art, icons, uh, word art, smart art, text boxes, comments, headers and footers. We'll look into those sorts of these tables. Draw is something that some folks may choose to use. I don't really use it much, so I've never really figured out why it's very useful in Word. But a person who's more artistic that may like to draw comments on um, and maybe circle things this is good for if you're looking at a paper and you're marking it up and you want to circle a couple of things in red to bring somebody's attention to it. That's about the best I know to do with it. Design has to do with the way your document will look if you change the color theme and fonts and special effects that can go into it. What do I mean? We'll talk about this more later, but essentially if you're working in somebody's office, they will want their documents from their correspondence to their reports, to their brochures, to their Microsoft spreadsheets, to PowerPoint uh, presentations to all have a similarity with their logo, logo with a color set, with the same fonts. And themes allow you to do that and to choose variants to change the color palettes of fonts that you might see in your home tab when you're changing the text color like this. So that's the sort of thing design does. Layout lets you set the page up for the way it should look when it's going to print. The margins, whether it's taller or wider in the way it prints out, what the page size is going to be, if there's going to be columns, things like that. References has to do, if you're doing work where you're going to need a table of contents, a glossary, a footnotes, endnotes, things for research papers, term papers, think informed essays, things like that. Mailings is where if you choose to use Word to merge with mailing lists and other types of content from other programs like Microsoft Excel, you could use this and it will help make those merges work and help you be able to personalize things. So for instance, in a job I held, we would send out various letters to people. And instead of manually typing Mr. or Ms. or Mrs so-and-so, and then referencing specific facts of what they needed to know in their document, we kept a big Excel spreadsheet that had all that information input into it, and we would create a merge document that would pull in very specific areas that information. And that way you could print out 10 to 20 letters at a time from specific lists in Excel, and it was very efficient. Review has to do with checking your spelling, your grammar, using the thesaurus, finding out what your word count is, checking the accessibility of your documents so that screen readers, that people with visual uh, divergences in what they can and can't see, can have a screen reader accu accurately translate what you have put into your document. And, you know, where you can um, share documents and do tracking of changes that different team members have made, things like that. View is more options, it includes more options than just this little view um, option area at the lower right on your uh, status bar. So you can look at things in the read mode, print, web, outline, drafts, all sorts of different ways. You could change sizes. The default often is to have the ruler on. This is the ruler that gives you an idea of what the page size is and what the margins are. You could turn this off. And if for some reason you don't see a ruler and you want one, you come over to view, and you choose ruler. So let's see. And then finally, help is where you can use to contact Microsoft's website to ask questions. The final thing I want to cover in here before we end this video is the file tab. The file tab is different. And this is for the Microsoft Windows system. So Macs have to look for some of this information. Mac users have to look for some of this information in other places. Some of it may be under their Apple button in their Mac user interface. In their Mac user interface, there's also usually a file button and an edit button, and a couple of other things. So some of this information may fall in those areas. They may also fall in one or more of the actual 
ribbon areas. So if you're looking for something related to printing, it may, if for all I know, I don't have a Mac, you may see something related to that in the layout or a, a tab that's similar. But in Windows, this backstage area is how you would manage your documents and the program itself. So as I indicated earlier, you could create new files, you can open them, you can save your documents, save as, which means the first time you save a document, you would save it with a file name and into a specific location. And then when you are working on that document, all you need to do is save and it will overwrite and add to what you've already saved in that location. You can save as a PDF, you can print a document, you can see document information. So like this, this will tell you who is the author of the document, which would normally be you, or if you are sharing this program with someone else, whoever the program's named um, is under. You can add metadata. You can inspect a document for the accessibility or for compatibility to older versions of Word. You can protect the document from people being able to edit it while they can view it. You can um, look to see if there's any uh, management here, like if there are any unsaved documents that you need to worry about. The print section gives you a chance to see a print preview, which in our case with the new document is nothing. It will give you a chance to save to PDF. One thing that happens with a lot of people these days is they may not have a printer at home anymore. I don't. So if you are trying to set up page margins and page size and you can't because the buttons are grayed out, you come over to the print area and at the very least set your printer to be Microsoft Print to PDF. This is built into the program and it would let you save your document as a PDF, but it also lets Microsoft Word see that there is some sort of printing option, so to speak, so that it can then apply margins and page size and so on. You can look at some of these other things. We'll probably take a look at this in another video and, and so on. Oh, more. One more thing. Your account information will tell you a bit about where your account comes from. I have Microsoft 365 from the college I work at. And then options. Options is where you can come in and you can make some changes in how the program works. So for instance, I'm using an office background of stars. I always show the start screen which is where I could see that new document and those templates and the pinned documents. You could turn this off if you don't want to see that sort of thing. With display, you could take a look in here to see what you would like to commonly see displayed while you're working. You can use proofing to um, make autocorrect options. You can look at save and have an auto recover and have it be every five minutes instead of every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes. You can take a look through there. Language, if you have another language that's your first language and English isn't, you can, if you don't already, make sure to find out how to get a, a language added that you need. Then that way, if you're typing in Spanish or French, um, I'm not sure how it works with Cyrillic languages and so on, but so you have those options. Accessibility, this is where you can take a look at a few accessibility options that the program has for you. Advanced will give you a variety of other things. These are things you might not want to play with too much until you become proficient at Word, but this gives you a lot of things that you could do, such as if you copy and bring in text from other documents, how it should come into Word, etc. Customize the ribbon. These are the ribbons, and you can actually customize them. This is a real strong recommendation. Until you are really, really proficient with Word, really comfortable that you know where everything is, don't change the ribbons. While it is possible to go back to the default, you could actually forget what should be where and have trouble finding it. So it's really good to be very careful about these. So these are the various main tabs and what's already in them and the types of icons that are in there, you can send some of them away. Maybe you never ever plan to insert a 3D model and you just don't want that in there. You could click that and see if you could remove it or you could add things. What I suggest is if you have a few things you really want, use the quick access toolbar. So for instance, I told you my quick access toolbar doesn't have the save icon anymore on it because I'm so used to having it. 
This is that save icon that many people opening Word for the first time will see. This is the redo arrow I mentioned, and then there's the undo arrow that I mentioned that will often be up here. I removed them, but I added some of these favorite things. Anyway, I hope that gives you enough basic information about the Microsoft Word user interface and that this video was helpful to you.